There's an off-axis aberration I'll say a little bit about today that does not affect image quality, but it does affect where the image forms, and that's Petzval curvature or field curvature. It's a result of the various surface powers and refractive indices inside of an optical system, and the consequence is a curved image surface, where in both the sagittal and the tangential directions, the image lifts off of the praxial plane it might go in front of the praxial plane or it might go behind the praxial plane, but the image surface will be this spherical bowl that has its vertex at the praxial focal point. You can imagine how this has to happen if you consider rays emerging from a single point somewhere out in space. They propagate toward the image surface. They'll all strike an image surface, but if they're all going to go the same distance, the image surface that they will strike will be a sphere. And the radius of the sphere is called the Petzval radius. P-E-T-Z is the operand in ZMAX Optic Studio. Taking a close-up look at the exit pupil of any optical system, where rho is the normalized radial coordinate inside the exit pupil, and out on the paraxial focus where the image forms, you have H, which is the normalized field coordinate on the image surface, or on the object surface, a bar is put above the H when that coordinate is referring to the chief ray, and when there is no bar above the H, the coordinate is referring to a marginal ray. There are two spheres to think about at the exit pupil. There's the reference sphere, which is an actual sphere that is centered at the actual paraxial focus, and then there's the actual wavefront which if the only aberration in the system is Petzval curvature, you can call it the Petzval wavefront. But it will deviate from the reference sphere, and the deviation, called W sub FC, FC for field curvature, is in fact the additional sag that you pick up as a result of the Petzval curvature. And it increases as you go out towards the edge of the pupil. So it's a field-dependent aberration expressed as the pupil coordinate squared times a function of the normalized field coordinate for the chief ray, f of h bar, and more specifically, field curvature is quadratic in the field coordinate, where w sub 220p is the coefficient for field curvature, and it is related to the Seidel coefficient for field curvature with a factor of 4. s sub 4 is the Seidel coefficient for curvature field, or Petzval curvature. We're going to compute the Seidel coefficient, S sub 4, using the curvatures of the surfaces and the refractive indices. It's given by minus the Lagrangian variant over 2 quantity squared times the sum of the curvatures times the change in 1 over the refractive index. That's a mouthful. Let's begin with L, the Lagrangian variant, usually given by the Cyrillic character J, which I don't have in my equation editor, although I could probably find it, but I will use this funny L instead. Oftentimes an H is used, I imagine, because it's like J without the line down the middle. The Lagrange invariant, or the optical invariant, has the same value throughout a system. It's given by the product of angle and ray height, where Y bar is the chief ray height and U is a marginal ray angle relative to the horizontal. Y then is the marginal ray height, and U bar is the chief ray angle relative to the horizontal. And that will have a value throughout a system. It's calculated only at the surfaces. I'll put this expression for S sub 4, the Seidel coefficient, into my Y and U spreadsheet and calculate the Petzval curvature for a lens. I've shown this Y and U spreadsheet with this same lens design in other videos. It's a double convex lens. The front surface has a radius of curvature of 124.709 millimeters. The back surface is minus 85.848 millimeters. The refractive index is that of crown glass, NBK7. The powers are calculated, and the marginal ray height is propagated through using the praxial ray trace equations, as well as the angles relative to the normal. The marginal ray emerges from the lens at a height of 4.86 millimeters and an angle of minus 0.04999 radians. And from that simple triangle, the marginal focus can be calculated, 97.273 millimeters. Fortunately, the Lagrangian variant is the same at both the front surface and the back surface of the lens. And the Seidel aberration coefficient for field curvature is calculated from the givens above. 
and the Lagrangian variance, resulting in 0 0.003 millimeters at surface 2, 0 0.002 millimeters at surface 1, for a total of the sum of the two, 0 0.005 millimeters. For the case of calculating the Seidel coefficient for surface 2, the after index is 1 because it's air again, and the before index is glass. It's common practice to put these Seidel coefficients in terms of wavelengths, and the way that's done is to take the Seidel aberration coefficient, divide by 4 to get this coefficient in terms of wavefront error, W sub 220p, and then divide it by the wavelength. In this case, I'm doing everything just at D light. That's the standard wavelength to use when you don't have a spread of wavelengths to work with. And I get 2.12 waves. This can be benchmarked against ZMAX Optics Studio, that is the lens, and three different fields are being used up to 10 degrees. The gray fan plots actually show Petzval curvature in them, and the two ways you can see it. Petzval curvature going as a function of h times rho squared is no different than defocus, except that it's field dependent. So as you go to higher and higher fields, from 0 to 7 to 10, you get more of it. Otherwise, it looks exactly like defocus if you only have one field to look at. So this increasing slope is an indication of field curvature. And the second thing that stands out in ray fan plots is how the field curvature is distinguished from astigmatism by the tangential and sagittal ray fans being similar. They have similar slopes at the origin. If it's field curvature, they have the same slope at the origin. If it's astigmatism, you have zero slope in the sagittal. Having a slope in the sagittal that's between zero and whatever it is in the tangential is an indication that we have a mixture of astigmatism and field curvature in this lens. The aberration coefficients bear that out pretty well. The field curvature coefficient, W sub 220, is found to be 2.218 waves. Compare that to what we got with the Excel spreadsheet, 2.12 waves, and the benchmarking is in fairly good agreement with the spreadsheet. Since it's generally undesirable to have field curvature, unless you actually have spherically curved photographic plates and sensors, it's desirable to correct for it. And in order to correct it, let's leverage the fact that positive and negative surfaces result in opposite signs of the Seidel coefficient. By combining positive and negative surfaces, it's possible to flatten the field. If I have a generic optical system forming an image behind it, so it's a net positive system, the image surface has curvature, which has a radius equal to the Petzval radius. Put a diverging lens in front of the image surface then I will have less Petzval curvature because the diverging lens has an opposite sign for S sub 4. In the case that all lenses in the system are thin lenses, in fact, you can calculate the Seidel coefficient by summing the power of each lens divided by the index of refraction of each lens. Lenses of equal and opposite power cancel out. And that is the art of field flattening. It will have the effect of moving the praxial focus a little bit. That could be minimized by placing this diverging lens really close to the image surface so that there isn't enough opportunity for the redirected rays to form an image farther away. Here's a simulation of that setup. There's a single double convex lens again, the exact same one. And now I put a concave plano diverging lens very close to the image surface. It has a radius of curvature of minus 53 millimeters on one surface and infinity on the other. By making it flat, it will mimic the new image surface and allow us to put it really close to it. And by really close, I have it currently at one and a quarter millimeter away. You may in fact realize a design where you put it even closer than that. Petzval radius depends on the Seidel aberration coefficient for field curvature and the denominator. So you want that to get as close to zero as possible because you want a Petzval radius to be infinity so that the image plane is flat. It also depends on the height of the image. The taller the image, the harder it is to claim that your image surface is flat. That's the consequence of the h max squared here, where h max is the height of the chief ray at maximum field. It's the largest the image gets. To see how I construct the spreadsheet, you can see my other video on constructing a YNU spreadsheet, and all of the following videos where I go over it again and make some slight improvements in how it's done. So the radii of curvatures are entered in, the blue numbers are entered in, black numbers are formulas, and the curvatures are calculated. 
thickness of the glass is 10 millimeters and I will go a distance of 94 millimeters which gets me just in front of the image surface at which point I add glass 2 which has a radius of curvature that I figured out I'll show you how and a back flat surface and it has a thickness of 2 millimeters and it turns out that there is one and a quarter millimeter left this one and a quarter millimeter is calculated from simple geometry of the marginal ray exiting the back surface and hitting the praxial image point. Powers are calculated for each surface. Of course, it's zero for the surface that's flat. And of course, it's zero for the stop that's in front. The stop I just put at zero. So it's right at the front surface of the lens. We can play with that to learn what it does. Then the marginal ray height and angles are computed. We won't use the angle of incidence, only the angle relative to the horizontal. The chief ray height at each surface is computed along with the angle at each surface. And then the Lagrange invariant is calculated at each surface. And from that, the Petzval radius of curvature is computed. Total Petzval is calculated just by adding those up. Now where did I get this minus 53.575? Well, I may have started with a wild guess of minus 100. Now, when I change that to minus 100, watch what happens to S sub 4. It goes from 4.88 times 10 minus 10 to 0.05. Let's start, in fact, with that at minus infinity. So it's just a slab of glass. And we're starting with an S sub 4 of 0.1. So I know it's not minus infinity. I know it's not minus 100. So I try minus 80. And I'm down to 0.036. I try minus 60. And I'm down to 0 0.01. Try minus 50. And look, it changed sign. So I know the zero for S sub 4 is between minus 50 and minus 60. So I try minus 51. And minus 005. Try minus 52. Minus 0033. Try minus 53. Minus 0011. I try minus 54. I went too far. And so I try minus 53.5. 7519 and I have 10 to the minus 9 and I'm satisfied because that's a very small number. Petzval radius then is computed and it's minus 3.9 times 10 to the ninth millimeters which is a pretty long ways. So the Petzval radius has come out to be infinity as you would expect at the point where you get S sub 4 to be 0. You can use this spreadsheet to test for sensitivity because this number of significant figures is not realistic. If I have minus 53.57 millimeters, watch the 4.58 times 10 minus 9, it becomes 1 times 10 minus 5. So we have a lot of sensitivity. You're not going to get zero Petzval curvature. The, the radius is still a million millimeters, which is a thousand meters, which is a kilometer, which in most applications is good, but it is not an infinite Petzval radius. Other items that are listed up here include how far the marginal focus is from the flattener, which is just geometry. It's distance from the back of glass one, which is 97 millimeters. That's the working distance to design for. If you don't have the flattener, the praxial focus is at 96.5. Putting the flattener in there moved the marginal focus by 726 microns. I did this at a field angle of plus or minus 15, so I didn't use a wide field of view. You can play with that. You can make the field of view larger and look what happens. The Seidel coefficient gets much larger. You have to use the chief ray height at max field in order to calculate the Petzval radius. And that, again, is just geometry. The height of the chief ray as it exits the back surface and the angle are used in a triangle to calculate the height at the image. Effective focal length is just there because I designed this to have an effective focal length of 100 millimeters. And it's a semi-fast lens, not a really fast lens. F number of 3.3. Okay, I encourage you to write your own YNU spreadsheet and do your own soft experiments and add additional lenses and find out for yourself what happens when you make changes to this system.